Hi, thanks for joining me in another video today. I finally got my hands on the newly refreshed Tesla Model 3. Thanks for one of my viewers for letting me borrow their vehicle. As the current Model 3 owner, I'm curious to see all the updates and changes, but we're going to look at everything. So buckle up and let's get started. This is a 2024 Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive. I accompanied the owner to pick up their vehicle and it was an extremely underwhelming experience. They streamlined the process by having everything done in the app, so it kind of takes away the human element of buying the car. Anyway, depending on the trim, the base price will range from $38,000 to $54,000 as of July 2024. The rear wheel drive gets an estimated range of 272 miles on the 18 inch wheels and Tesla recently added the long range rear wheel drive for the first time in many years. There have been several updates to the Model 3, including additions and deletions inside the cabin, comfort, and changes to the exterior design. The first thing to notice on the updated Model 3 is a newly styled front fascia. These new headlights are quite thin and pointed. They look incredibly sporty. The front end has been brought to a sharp angle and is a bit squarer shaped than the old front end. Though its sharper and flatter look can be seen in the prototype of the Model 3. On the rear wheel drive, we're missing the slots for airflow, but if you get the performance model, it has them and it gives it a cool look blending the old car and the new one together. As with all Tesla vehicles, we have a front. It's 3.1 cubic feet, so you'll be able to fit your gym bag or some groceries. I'll add my duffel bag in here so you can get a better idea of size. On the side profile, we get a new style on the 18 inch wheels with the aero caps on. It's sporting hand-cooked Ventus tires straight out of the factory. If you choose to replace this in the future, you're looking at about $222 for each tire. The car features matte black plastic on the trim, door handles, and side cameras. On to the back. Tesla switched out its T emblem and replaced it with the word Tesla fully written out. The taillights have been updated and have a C shape now. Since the taillights are on a moving panel, the bottom reflectors also double as lights, in case you're driving with the trunk open. Don't worry, these lights are already included in the light shows. I checked. Opening the automatic trunk, we see 21 cubic feet of space behind the second row. In total, we have a maximum cargo volume of 24.1 cubic feet when you include the sub trunk. Let's put in some luggage to get a better idea of its space. Since there isn't a subwoofer in this trim, we get two side pockets so you can stash some small items. In the intro sequence of my videos, you hear a That's now the old sound of Tesla, I guess. There's actually a new unlocked sound and it's using the exterior speakers rather than the horn. Hear it again, old car and new car. The sound of the steering wheel horn is different too because it doesn't really exist per se. It now has a digital horn, it uses the speaker as well, listen. Every Tesla car built today has cameras all over the exterior, though one of the three forward-facing cameras has been eliminated. So we've got a total of seven exterior cameras and an internal one for monitoring driver attentiveness while using FSD. That's all on the exterior for now, let's head inside. Okay, I'm excited and not so excited about some of the changes in here. Let's do things a little differently and start in the back. It's cool to see the additional eight inch screen for the rear passengers. They can control their climate and play around with some of the media. You can watch videos or play games while you're on a long ride. Underneath the screen, two USB-C ports are available to plug in your phone. The owner decided to get the white interior, which is an extra thousand dollars. I've heard the material is easy to clean, but it's white after all. You're going to have to be very careful. It does add an essence of elegance though. Lastly, you'll fit two friends back here, but a third will be tough. It's a compact sedan, so having three adults back here won't be too comfortable. Let's make our way back to the front. Yes, there's nothing up here but a huge screen, nothing you didn't already know. The whole car is controlled with the touch screen plus a couple of buttons on your steering wheel. When I reviewed the Model S Plaid, I got to experience not having socks behind the steering wheel and it's finally come over to the Model 3. I said it was weird at first, but you get used to it. Which is true, but that doesn't mean I like it. So how do you change gears, turn on a blinker, or even control your windshield wipers? When you get into the vehicle, you press on the brake and your gear selection options will appear on the screen. Swipe up to drive, down to reverse, and tap to park. As for blinkers, just press the arrow buttons on the left side of the steering wheel. Windshield wipers can be activated with the button on the right side as well. On a positive note, Tesla has finally answered my call. 
the Model 3 now has ventilated seats. Look at this week's forecast, it's disgusting. How am I filming right now? Anyway, these ventilated seats are amazing. Tess, if you're listening, I'll pay for a retrofit for this in my car. The materials in the cabin have changed and feel higher quality. In the middle, there's a deep pocket for storage, two wireless chargers, and one USB-C port. There's also an additional USB port in the glove box for your dash cam storage. It's important to note that you won't have floor mats or a charging cable included upon delivery. You'll have to pay separately for those in a Tesla shop or find a third party vendor. The automatic garage door opener is also not included and can be added after purchase. I feel like all of these should be included when you buy the car. Finally, another nice touch is the addition of ambient lighting. You'll be able to set the mood by changing the color in the light settings. For those familiar with Tesla's interface, feel free to skip forward a few seconds. But for those who are unfamiliar, let me give you a quick tour. This is running on the AMD Ryzen computer and has FSD hardware version 4. Having everything on your screen can seem overwhelming. To be honest, I sometimes forget where things are, especially after software updates. In this menu, you'll find all your settings including mirrors, climate, safety features, steering wheel, and driving. Your rear view mirror is manual, just adjusted as you would normally. There are games and some media streaming platforms. Unfortunately, Tesla doesn't use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, so you'll need to use existing apps in the system. There's also a lot of information about your vehicle, such as energy usage and charging. There's some really in-depth diagnostics if you ever want to dive into that. Tesla does a good job at navigating your route with planned charging stops. It'll let you know what battery percentage you'll arrive at and the percentage you'll have when you return. Lastly, if you want to access live traffic and streaming services, you'll have to subscribe to their monthly premium and connectivity for $10 a month or $100 yearly. Okay, here's how you put it in drive. You press on the brake and your controls will appear here on the left side on the screen. Swipe up to drive. Sometimes there are situations when your steering wheel is already turned and you're trying to locate the blinker, so it could be a bit odd trying to find it. Immediately, I can feel differences in the drive from previous Model 3s. I'm happy to report the wind and road noise have been significantly reduced. The suspension is softer, so it's not as sporty, and you feel less bumps on the road. One of my favorite things about Tesla is their one-pedal driving capabilities in all of their vehicles. I'd recommend watching my one-pedal driving video to learn more. If you haven't driven a vehicle with strong region, it does require some getting used to, but it has a lot of benefits. They finally added a blind spot warning indicator that doesn't require you to look at the screen. When you turn your blinker on, your camera will pop up like it always did. But now there's a light on the A-pillar speaker. I don't know why they put it there. I would have preferred that they put it on the side mirror like every other manufacturer does, but at least it has one. The ride is fun and it's quick. You can easily zip in front of other cars and it handles well around corners. By now you're probably familiar with Tesla's autopilot or full self-driving capabilities. Either you've heard about it or you've seen it on the news. Autopilot is a combination of driver assistant features. It requires you to be attentive, so don't try engaging it and then become distracted. Autopilot is very helpful on long drives, but it could be polished. FSD is a whole other playing field. If you want to see FSD in action, check out my autonomous vehicles playlist. Since this is a standard range model, we have a lithium iron phosphate battery in the car. This battery chemistry is fantastic for average everyday use. One major advantage that it has over the typical high performance cells Tesla uses is that it can be charged up to 100% daily. No more limiting the car to 80% for daily drives. It has an eight kilowatt onboard charger, so that's more than enough to charge it up overnight. It also features a permanent magnet motor mounted on the rear axle. It's able to go 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds and has a top speed of 125 miles per hour. Let's go test that top speed. Just kidding. It also has a lithium ion low voltage battery. No more lead acid batteries here. This car is equipped with CCS communication, so it'll be able to work with CCS and third party next chargers. It also features a heat pump, which greatly improves the efficiency of driving in cold weather. Time to charge up. We're down to 9%. Tesla doesn't have the 10 to 80% charge time listed on their site, but they do state that when charging, we'll max out at 170 kilowatts and we'll be able to add up to 175 miles in 15 minutes. I'll be plugging into version three Tesla superchargers. Here's our charging graph. It wasn't what I expected. We started off strong getting a peak of 174 kilowatts. However, it wasn't able to sustain high rates. 
Around 31% it started to slow down quicker than I anticipated. At 38% it went under 100 kilowatts and decreased thereafter. This wasn't my greatest charging experience in a Tesla. My assumption is the outside temperature had an impact on this as it was 112 degrees Fahrenheit. And I was sitting in the vehicle with the AC on. So the car was constantly trying to cool the battery. It took us 42 minutes to go from 9 to 80% and the cost for this session was $21.62. You'll have access to your car right from your phone on the Tesla app. It acts as your key so you don't have a fob to take with you, though you do get a key card to unlock your car in case your phone dies. There are some pretty neat features you can use in the app, like you can monitor your live cameras around the car and inside the vehicle, turn on your AC, monitor charging sessions, and locate it. It also controls some extra fun stuff, like project your voice or fart noise to the outside speakers of the car. So much can be done from the app. On another note, all Tesla cars come with a 4-year, 50,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty. For the standard range cars, you also get an 8-year, 100,000-mile battery and drive unit warranty. On long-range and performance cars, it's 8 years and 120,000 miles. How the Model 3 do? It provides good range options and now you can get the long-range rear-wheel drive with up to 363 miles. It's fun to drive and great tech. There's also one pedal driving. Its autopilot system could do better and there is even more dependency on the screen to control things now that the stocks are gone. I would really like to see Tesla add some V2L capabilities to the Model 3. Even just a 120 volt outlet in the car would be a major improvement and this feature is starting to become a standard on other electric cars. The Tesla Model 3 has made changes in the EV landscape since its launch. It remains one of the EV options with an accessible price. However, it's not the only one in the electric sedan space anymore. Now that many competitors are going to be tapping into the Tesla supercharging network, they'll be able to travel cross-country on reliable stations too. Whatever your top preferences are, you'll have options, including the Model 3, of course. Thanks for spending time with me today. Support our channel and check out our Kai sticker shop. Kai is my dog. Have any V I can review? Email me at info at kaizv.com. And follow us on social media at kaizv. That's all for now, and happy charging.